Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we are back in automation with the light campaign v3 and our playthrough of uh, the Sphrenian supercars uh, and with Merano and uh, we shall continue our little journey We've just been very very productive. Not only have we created probably the best supercar or hypercar that has ever been made the Freschetta, but also the Vivace, uh, which is yeah, kind of a, the ultimate light sports car. Both of them will completely destroy the automotive world. This one not by selling much and making us a profit, but um, by being that awesome, like every man-child's dream. And then we have the Vivace, the affordable alternative <laughs> to that one <laughs> maybe not quite an alternative but let's say it is <laughs> that's that's the marketing maybe we can have this one in the background and then say this is its little brother or something maybe people will believe that people believe a lot of things so uh, from here today i think is a transport episode we shall see how we're doing we need a facelift for the vega which well, not yet obviously but um, some some time down the line facelift for that and other than that we have the Avantis still building uh, yes that one might be next I think that would make sense to have that one updated next but first while this is taking a lot of cash we need to make sure that the Vega continues selling as well as it does right now. Oh, where, where's my... No, 1946? Isn't that not why I want to be? Oh, stop! Stop right there! Halt! Oh, the economy is turning up! Uh, that That's a good thing. Yes, give us more sales, please. And we are going to pay massive amounts of taxes. Hmm... Can we upgrade some of our dealerships, maybe? Uh, first of all, let's see if we can upgrade our marketing. Half a million should be fine. Um, let's put some more in these regions. Dalua. Let's make that market a bit bet uh, bigger. Do we want that? Uh, probably yes. 120 million seems adequate it's a massive hypercar market after all 525 million no not going there and the Hedvesians are not liking sports cars and this is just too much for now okay all right i'm happy that should have reduced our tax load a little bit let's see how much we have to pay 50 million all right wasn't the vivace a two billion dollar project i believe it is uh, it will take us uh, gathering a bit more cash before we can pay all this off. And the Freschetta isn't uh, isn't entirely for free either. Holy shit, 137 million in taxes. Yeah, that hurts a bit. Uh, um, let's quickly check out how much tech we now have in body. Well, four. That means we should have year 2000 bodies now. And we do need a new <laughs> challenger for the Adv Avantis. That one is really old. All right, selecting all regions. And let's see what we do have in this category. Everything is from 93. Uh, come on. Come on. Spinny disc. Spin faster. Uh, of course. Of course. Uh, the the good old 2000 coupe uh, body mm. yeah gt premium it is not man there's nothing in there that would fit the bill we do need a four seater that's the whole point of the avantis no now a factory starts building you can see the cost skyrocket we're still making profits though and then another factory starts building. It's getting a little... Oh, we're not going to pay any bigger taxes, that's for sure. That is uh, very much cost neutral right now. Despite us making 47 million a month, minus a few bucks here and there. 
All right, but we do need to facelift the Vega at some point. And we can just um, disband the Av Advan Advantis, no, Avantis uh, once it, the engine finishes, because that one won't have an engine able to produce anymore. Oh no, we don't have to touch this factory. It should be fine. Um, anyway, yes, let's... Uh, we have four years, so basically another year or another six months of wait time before we get some new bodies. Well, let's update the Vega. Uh, it's about time. Ten years after its original design. Alright. New facelift. And we are going... Ah, yes, I know what I'm going to do. We're going to clone the contents of this one. And... Uh, well... Ah, this one is now checked. Okay. We're not going to check this one, but these two. Um, agree, agree to that, and this one will stay, like the old version of it, so that it can foot, uh, can be produced by the Avantis. That should work, I believe. I think it's running on that one. So, um, let's edit this. Uh, it's all forged, all nice, gets VBT, oh yes. Some, some nice upgrades here and there. Let's see, more compression. Yeah, twin. Twin throttle certainly helps the power delivery. And the revability. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, nine. Whoa. Yeah, we can rev this thing to the moon if you wanted to. Doesn't. Doesn't bring us anything, though. It's beautiful sound for the sound, of course. And we can put a few points into the exhaust. Yeah. Yeah, 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 this is this is good stuff. Um, plus five there. And here we already have plus three. Let's go for plus five. And... Well, do, do we actually need that? I mean, does it change anything? No, it doesn't. It's already revving way, way higher than uh, we could possibly use. So now for a bit more powerful version. <laughs> a bit more powerful. Well, let's see if we also can get something like 25 horsepower out of this one. I I shall hold the engine so that we see the difference. What all this tuning does. I've also upped the cam profile a bit, and uh, yeah, this looks pretty impressive. I deliberately have this down here so that you can see the top end there. Uh, yeah, that's quite a big difference. I like it. So, how much power are we making compared to before? That is. 344 instead of 316. Good update. Oh, wait a second. We can probably push that higher. Uh, 48. Do we want to sacrifice that nice low end, low end power band? Still higher there compared to the previous engine. It just gives us four extra horsepower. Ah, well, let's not do it. It's fine. But maybe we should go for throttle per cylinder. I mean, that is... Oh, production units. Oof. Oof, big oof. Yeah, that's another 10 production units on top of that. Now, oh, there we go. Another inch of cam profile, and we have 31 horsepower advantage over the old one. All right, let's see. What can we make of the little one? Last time... We did give it a big, big update. I remember that. It was massively increased performance. Now let's hold the engine and see what we can do. A cast components now revving to seven uh, to nine thousand seven hundred. Is that enough? I I believe it is. Oh, can get VVT. Yes. Whoa, that makes such a difference. Okay, this this engine is just insane. Holy shit. L look at that. Some more perform high-end performance gain there. And low-end performance gain. That's a lot. Uh, okay. We are now making, out of 2.5 liter, we are making 269 horsepower on... Um, on cast components, cast internals without quality spam. 
and even a bit more here. Can we open up the exhaust more? Here we could, but now nah, it doesn't do too much. So let's keep it closed. Our medium free is already working full out. Can't keep up. Can we make the situation any better? Hmm, well, we can try to amp up the tooling optimization in engineering. And we can try to give it some more quality here to up the production in general. That is very costly though. It's a hundred million just for that. Is that really worth it? Um, wait a second. Which one are we supposed to build? The clone? Oh no, this must be the original. Yeah, so let's remove this. Up the efficiency of production. Ah, good news here though. We can make that happen in a reasonable-ish time frame. Oh, and the exhaust is what is holding us back. Okay, I'd rather have it such that we don't have quite as much performance in the exhaust and get the tooling up, because that will mean that we can build many, many more engines. Look at that, so this is 918 now at 60. Oh, if we had 70 tooling optimization, we would be at 1,200. Yeah, that's that's a difference. And, ooh, pressure and funding is at maximum. Reliability is not too great. Yep, let's change over the engine to not use five quality on the exhaust. Plus one quality on everything. Yeah, that's it's probably better. That will also limit the uh, requirements of production units. That is quite something. We will be able to produce so many more engines. Oh, and it will uh, up the factory efficiency overall. That too. So, oh, yep. Yeah. Look at that. Now the exhaust system is down to 16.8 as a base. And we can up the tooling. We can optimize. There's not much you guys can learn at this pressure. <laughs> but, I mean, 30 months is a lot of time. Let's sign this off for now and then have a look at the cars and what updates we need to implement into the Vega of the next generation. All right, okay, now that we are going to get the Vivace, I think this one should be slightly higher end. It is slightly higher end. I mean, we have the sports interior here. For the Vivace, we had standard and basic or something crazy low like that. Maybe updating it to uh, the premium cassette while it's still here. Yeah, that will differentiate it so, uh, somewhat from the rest. We've already engineered ABS for this one. Now that's a good thing. We could update to 90s standard safety. And while we're at it, why not try to get some more fancy tech in here? Engineering time 16, ouch. Yeah, we kind of have to choose. Adaptive has already been engineered and adding these is it's probably for the better. Yeah, sway bars over even better dampers. Whoa, this is getting close. You see the in already trying to do the uh, complete overturn. Like oversteer power. Here we come. Uh, also, this car is pretty high. Why is it so high? 6.2 degrees roll angle. What the fuck? What the fuck is going on? Oops. Whoa! Stop you right there, sir. Alright, this is better. <laughs> it's 4 degrees now, 4.3 instead of 6. Uh, and it should look a bit better as well. Yes, yes, yes. It's no longer a race buggy. Light Sport Premium. That is the category we did not aim at in the Vivace. So it's not stealing too much market from it. It's great. Now, oh, this one has now gone full luxury CD. Hmm. Is that what we want for it? Otherwise, there's not too much difference, really. So, uh, yeah, let's go for it. Sport and luxury CD. Also, some more uh, suspension tuning. And we are ready for that one to be done as well. Uh, slightly higher priced. More of a supercar. Indeed, that's what it's supposed to be. Yeah, that's spot on. Spot on. Very, very nice uh, convertible sport. Um, in a pretty sweet spot for the pricing. And a convertible supercar. 95%. 
Good stuff. That's fully convertible, of course. OSS. So with all these cars done, new iteration. Need to look into the factory. Just to update it is 61 million. Let's sign that one off. That's good. And oh, yeah, okay. At no pressure, this takes 40 months. It's a little much. We can pour some money into it though. Because we're making a lot of profit here. Every month, 40 million roughly. That means that we can easily afford to put um, like 30-ish million extra into it for gaining a month. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. All right, engineering is pushed to 30 months as well. And we do need... Holy shit, what a profit forecast that is. Four billion in seven years? Yes, please. Or six years even. Yeah, that's quite good. Uh, 2.5 shifts target. I do want to squeeze this factory as much as I can. And this should be it, really. 30, 30, 7, 8. Yeah, spot on. Let's sign it off. Uh, this one is still over here. <laughs> we don't we don't want you. Go away. Maybe I should just edit the project and get rid of... Oh. Yeah, there's the uh, latest facelift. Uh, 46, 55, 60, 65, 94. Spot the odd one out. Delete. Yeah, now it's gone. Okay, good. Um, we're signing this one off. This all looks good. This one is still in there. Agreed! Ah, so much is going on. So much is going on. There will be a time where we are suffering great, great losses. Well, well this is going on. Pretty good. We don't have to pay any taxes like this. Good investment. Um, we should take a look. 53 million? That's really nice. Anyway, let's check out the markets. Overall, all the world's markets. We have pretty solid coverage of the super and hyper car market. I, I do oppose that, that statement. Is it true? I think it is. Um, market awareness. Let's have a look. 30%. Yeah. That's solid. And very soon, we will be delving into the light sport here as well. It's not a massive market. Uh, just 633. Oh, but that is at 6.8%. No, year-on-year -year growth. Everything grows. Ah, all right. Uh, sorry. Uh, demographic sizes. No, this is... Ah, demographic size growth, yes. But that is at our awareness. That is what I wanted to point out. And our awareness is just the 19%. So we can basically double that. Pretty easily. Oh, uh, now the losses are starting. <laughs> the Freschetta is about to finish construction. And then we have the Vivace is already... It's already there. And... Pro uh, producing its factories. God, stop, 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 stop. We just sold our first cars at fixed margin. Uh, eight. We sold eight cars and 2.16 cars. Yeah. We, we do sell them as miniatures as well, so... <laughs> Um, okay. Well, that's a few months worth of production right there. And now it's 1999. We should have a look at if we maybe uh, can... If we maybe can make a follow-up to the Avantis. Uh, based on what is the question? Look at this trash. Based on a... On a Prius. <laughs> yes. Great. On the other hand, <laughs> there, there is a coupe version of this one. <laughs> Could make it happen. And also, it is very, very drag efficient. Yes. Uh, let's select that one and see what happens. So, aluminium. This is going to be built in a small factory. So, yes, aluminium. Um, space frame. Yes, no mass production, I know. Uh, AHS steel. What? No mass production. This one has no mass production. Ah, this one doesn't even have a tooltip. Okay, it's confusing. Uh, so, here we have double wishbone, double wishbone. Sub same setup as always. 
Uh, we do want to make... No, we do want to select um, one of the L version engines. Yeah, the latest one. That one. L3200. And hatchback, hatchback, hatchback. Panel van version. No, maybe this one. Let's see. Oh man, this. No, this. No. <laughs> just, just no. <laughs> Can we morph this into something that looks like a GT car? No! Can only made, be made weirder. Can be made a lot weirder. Huh? No? Uh, uh, no, this is, this is not good. Uh, okay. Maybe a little, little bit, yeah. And remove the nose a bit and there's not much, not much here to salvage, is there? These arches also look shit. Shit for a GT car, that is. And the, the back now at least doesn't look entirely funny anymore. Well, still a fucking Prius. Uh, uh, um, yeah. And this is just butt ugly. <laughs> this is... Fuck me, it's ugly. <laughs> no, no, I can't do this to you guys. I can't, just can't. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm cruel. I know, I'm cruel. But not that cruel. Let's just see how it performs, shall we? <laughs> um, probably all wheel drive while we're at it. Or advanced automatic, yes, five ratios. And viscous, don't really need the diff. It's just for smoothing out some action there. Oh, can't even put on any tires. Yeah, okay. Need to morph more. Urgh. 255s in the rear, 235s in the front. Vented discs. Okay. Well, the stats are pretty terrible right now. Uh, let's fix those up. 39 sportiness only? Okay, the steering isn't too great. Oof, that's a fat car. Almost 1.6 tons. And there's so much power loss in this thing. Only produce 274, 276 horsepower at the wheels. All-wheel drive is eating a bit, and of course the automatic transmission. Okay, I've seen worse builds, but stats are acceptable. Uh, they are indeed acceptable. Great scoring in the category we are aiming for, GT and uh, probably also GT Premium, if we take a look. Yeah, 157. So it's definitely the right kind of car. And the automatic transmission, of course, is what is killing sportiness a bit. Let's see what this one does with manual and... Oh, uh, yeah, okay. That's a much more reasonable value. This must be the fastest Prius ever made. We shall have a go at the test track before we scrap this design. <laughs> or maybe we shouldn't, but I wouldn't give it to you to design. Although that might be a good challenge. Make this thing. Yeah, actually, the more I think about this, I mean, it does take a real uh, OCD <laughs> to uh, to make this car into a looker in the GT Premium market. Right. Okay. Uh, test track. What do you say? It always sounds great. Revs to 9.5. I mean, people would get fucking scared with this thing coming at them. And it does the test track in 2.19.7. Mm, yeah, it's a little mediocre, maybe. Well, we have been building very much non-mediocre cars lately. Now, now, just look at it. Just look at it. This, this would be uh, maybe a bit too much of a funny challenge. And for a heavy car like this, coming out in like 2005, only having 320 horsepower, might not be enough. So I think this design actually needs to be scrapped. This is the one of the few Merano designs ever that has been scrapped. We delete the project. It's never happened. It was never to see the light of day. But after all that, I hope you enjoyed, and see you guys next time. <laughs>